Hello and welcome back to the Leander 98 channel. Today we'll be taking a look at this 2017 Nismo GTR R35 on an XMods Evolution chassis. This is not an OEM body and was made specifically just for this chassis. This body here was printed on my Anycubic Photon Mono X in two pieces. The spoiler being the main part just so then I don't have any of that ugly support material built up underneath as well as that the printer doesn't screw up any of the dimensional accuracies of the spoiler. Other than that, this car printed pretty easily. For this specific body, I'll be running it on a 98mm long chassis with the G35 front clip on it. The main body that came on this chassis was the G35 and the 2005 Ford Mustang. But many cars in the street branded XMods use this chassis length as well. I'm using this clip as my standard, as it is the shortest clip in length so it makes bodies easier to model for. I'll be dubbing this the sedan slash luxury coupe class as this, is, this chassis has some length to it, and some SUVs may also fit on this chassis in case of not wanting to be moved to a full truck chassis. This chassis being on the longer side may cause it to understeer a bit if not handled correctly. Throwing the body on the scale, we see that it hits that nice perfect 42 grams that seems to be a key winner whenever it comes to doing bodies on here. But if we throw it on the uh, balancing tray, we see that we have a 24 grams in the rear and 11 grams in the front. A very light front end due to that spoiler being added there. That should give it a little extra rear grip on slippery tires. Might cost some understeer, but at least it'll be able to grip out of the corners a little better. As we set the chassis down onto the scale, we see that the bare chassis itself with batteries weighs 190 grams. The front weight distribution is 48 grams on the passenger side and 39 grams on the driver's side. For the rear, it's 46 grams on the driver's side and 56 grams on the passenger side. Not the most balanced of chassis, but considering we take a lot more left hand corners than right hand corners, having more weight on the right hand side might not be a bad idea. This chassis looks heavily modified in terms of its electronics, and it is, but nothing has been modified in terms of the voltage going to the motor, so it runs at a very healthy 18 kilometers per hour. The extra 3.7 volt LiPo that gets plugged in is directly into the receiver to fuel the steering servo as the ESC tends to cut off the steering sometimes when it's hungry for voltage. The whole point of this is to run hobby electronics and use a proper controller instead of the junk OEM one. Oh my god, come on, nice first impression. What? Come on, you didn't do this during practice. Oh, don't do that. Oh, come on. Just dumping it in that corner and not even carrying any momentum. And that's better. Oh. 
I know we can go faster. Tires is starting to warm up a little. Come on, come on. Oh yeah. Oh. Come on, stop doing that. Just follow the line. Oh, car's wanting to take the gear to the right now. Ooh. Not even trial. Oh, that's the end. Bring it in. All right, let's take a look at that timesheet. We can see that our fastest lap was an 8.62. For this chassis, pretty good. Well, we did try SUVs on this chassis for the first run, and even the fastest one there was in the high eights, so we're certainly faster than it here. Definitely faster than the slowest on it by almost a whole second. But, this is a Nissan GTR. I got a full spoiler kit and everything on it, so it should be able to hold the corners a little bit. But we'll have to see how it handles up against something else that doesn't have a spoiler, but has the slicked look of a coupe. So, hope you liked what you watch, and I'll see you in the next one. One last thing before we close here on this video. If you like the cars that you saw in this video, Take a look at the link down in the description. It'll take you to my Colts 3D page where you can download the STL file for just $1. That $1 will get you a dummy chassis and the body in resin printing and FDM plastic printing as well. This way, so that you can print it whether or not you have a plastic printer that you want to use for racing, or maybe you got a resin printer that you want to use extra detail for. Either way, your taste. You can download the car that you saw in this video today on my Colts 3D page that's down in the link in the description below. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new, subscribe for more RC driving content here. That's quite a different few different things that we do on this channel here, so I apologize if it's never one exact thing. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Track layout. Oh my god, come on, nice first impression. What? Come on, you didn't do this during practice.
Oh, come on. He just dumping it into that corner and not even carrying any momentum. And that's better. Come on! I know we can go faster. Tires are starting to warm up a little. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh. Come on, stop doing that. Just follow the line. Ugh, car's wanting to take veer to the right now. Ooh. Uneven tile. Oh, that's the end. Bring it in.